We're on the record. I will call this uh, Township Council special meeting of August 9th, 2021 to order. The agenda for this special meeting to the, to the extent known is as follows. Introduction of 2021 municipal budget. Formal action may or may not be taken. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the open public meetings law by following the notice in the office of the township clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the municipal building uh, and on the municipal website on August 5th, 2021, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the daily record on August 7th, 2021, and copies of this notice were transmitted to the daily record and the star ledger on August 5th, 2021. Would you all join me in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Ms. Karifi? Here. Ms. Grignani? Here. Ms. McCarthy? Here. Ms. Peterson? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Also in attendance are uh, Mayor Michael Soriano, Township Attorney Jim Lott, Business Administrator Fred Carr, CFO Juan Uribe, and Township Clerk Colette Madden, Council President. We have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to open this meeting to the public on the budget only. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by <coughs> Ms. Peterson. Uh, before I go into roll call, I just need to make a quick announcement. Um, we were uh, we had some discussions about having a budget discussion with department heads on uh, upcoming Wednesday. I think it was August 11th. Uh, in our discussions, um, my office, I was under the impression that we were rescheduling today's meeting for Wednesday, so we did not properly notice Wednesday's meeting. So what I'm saying basically is we cannot have a meeting on Wednesday because it was not properly noticed, and we need to reschedule that meeting for sometime next week. So you guys let me know. We don't need to do it now, but just let me know what days you may be available next week for uh, not a budget hearing, but a budget discussion with the department heads and administration. If everyone will send me an email of what dates next week they are available, we'll see if we have a common night we can all meet. Could we do it before the council meeting on Tuesday? Could. That's very that clever. Narrows, huh? That narrows down the number of nights. Uh, yeah, you could do that. I am solutions oriented. Well, let me see. Yeah, that's a <laughs> clever move, Miss Peterson. <laughs> so it works for me. It should work for everybody. Okay. We could do uh, the meeting at 5, and then we have our meeting at 7, take a break in between. Um, we could do the we could do it a little later. Right? Whatever you guys want. That's, that's not convenient. 5 is not convenient for a lot of people. Uh, how about 6.30 on Monday the 16th? M Monday the 16th? Okay, is that good for everybody? No, no, no. No, no, no. Wait, I don't have my calendar with me. I'll have to check. All right, we'll make it tentative, and if council members can't make it, the seventeenth, right? No, the sixteenth. Monday, the sixteenth. He's saying. Oh, oh, so you're not going to have it the same night as the regular council meeting? No. Uh, apparently not. Well, that's the other option. Have a five o'clock meeting oh, on the seventeenth. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. You want? Is that what you want to do? Yeah, this way, right before the council, the regular meeting. Is it two hours enough? Colette thinks it's probably too much that we could have the meeting and then take a break. I'd rather have a separate meeting. I'd rather have a separate meeting too. We have two feelings here for a separate meeting. I have no preference. Whatever you want to do is fine. All right, so we'll try for Monday the 16th for a separate budget meeting with our administration. Monday the 16th? Monday the 16th? Yeah. Monday's the 16th. Yeah. Uh, I may have a problem getting here by 5. No, well, Monday, Monday we can make it six oh, or six thirty. Okay, all right, that's fine. Then. 
So it sounds like the consensus is from Monday the 16th at 6.30? Well, we have to check with... Uh, I'm okay. Looks like I'm okay. Yep, looks like we're okay. Okay, that's it. So we're okay? Right. I'll go ahead and notice this meeting. Good. Okay, um, so back to the public hearing. Uh, we had a motion by Mr. Karifi, um, a second by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Karifi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, the floor now is open only on the 2021 municipal budget. Come on up, Bob. While we're waiting, uh, Jim, if I may, uh, since this is not the official budget for the council's uh, introductory budget and according, really anybody can talk about anything. The budget Correct. has the budget is on the agenda, but they can the public can talk about whatever they want. That's correct. Oh, that's right, because it's not the actual hearing. hearing that's that's right. right. That's right. Oh, yeah. So we're making mistakes today, left and right. Scratch that. Speak on any matter you'd like. Bob Venezia, 102 Brooklawn Drive. Bob Venezia, 102 Brooklawn Drive. Um, I have a number of questions about the budget. Um, I'll read them all since you. You, I have to go through them all before you will answer them. And I don't expect you to remember them, so you have a copy of them yeah. in front of you, and you can answer them as you see fit. Um, question number one, each 1% 1 increase in property taxes brings in about $470,000 in revenue to the township. Is that correct? Number two. This year, no money will be transferred from the utility budgets to the general budget. And no such transfers are expected to be made in future budgets. Is that correct? Three, Parsippany must make annual payments of about a half a million dollars for five years to pay back the $2.3 million special appropriation. Does the half a million dollar annual payment fall within the 2% tax uh, increase cap or will the special appropriation payments allow Persephone to increase taxes above 2 percent? Four, when the 39 percent increase to the water and sewer utility rates was passed, it was projected that there would, would be another 5 to 8 percent <coughs> utility increase this year and for each year through 2024. Are those projections still in effect? Five, at the last council meeting, Council Member McCarthy mentioned that in addition to the $1.1 million uh, waiver for the account appropriation balance, other unnamed budget reserves have been tapped in order to balance the current budget. What are these other reserves and how much money has been taken from each? And finally, um, we know that from the last council meeting that after the 39% rate hike, for Parsippany's water and sewer rates, uh, I'm sorry, Parsippany's water and sewer rates lie within the mid-range among towns in Morris County. Uh, where does the 2.15% municipal tax increase stand in comparison to other towns in the county? Thank you. Mr. Council President, I'm prepared to answer questions one, two, and six, and CFO Juan Uribe can answer questions three, four, and five. Okay. Mr. Benizia, um, I do recall you coming up in front of this council over a year ago and talking about COVID financing and asking, pleading for nothing more than a 2% tax increase. So I just want to remind you of that, and I appreciate that. Each 1% in increase in property taxes brings the town to about $4,700,000 in revenue to the township. Correct. No, that is incorrect. The number is really about 727000 Okay. Um, second, this year no money will be transferred from the utility budgets to the general budget and no such transfers are expected to be made in future budgets. Correct. 
Yes, that is correct. Six, we know that from the council meeting after the 39% tax, 39% uh, rate hike, Parsippany's water and sewer rates lie in the mid range among towns in Morris County. Where does the 2.15% municipal tax increase stand in comparison to other towns in this county? We can't answer that yet. Not all the budgets are done, but uh, we think that puts us, the proposed 2.15% would put us in, in, in a very comfortable range and in a respectful range, but we'll get you, we'll, we'll get you that number. Okay. One. Yes, sir. <clears throat> We got equation number three, which is related to the half a million dollars that have to be paid every year for five years to amortize the $2.3 million note. Yes, that is a way out of the caps, which means that it's not limited within the caps. Uh, in regards to question number four, when the 39% increase to the water and sewer utility rates was passed, it was, a, it was also projected that there, there would be uh, another five to eight percent utility increase this year and for each year until 2024. I cannot specifically answer that question right now. That is the projection that was made at the time the analysis was conducted, but we don't know how the budget makeup is going to shape from here to 2024. That is the intention because, yes, we need to recover uh, the cost of living adjustment of those utilities. I'm going to respond to that too, but continue. Yes, you may go ahead, sir, if you want to. Okay. The 39% increase at, at that time was because the, the township did not increase sewer rates for 12 years. Now, during that 12 years, fund balance was being used up by increases in salaries, pensions, benefits, increased costs for um, chemicals needed at the sewer treatment plant, increased costs for hauling the sludge away to a landfill someplace in Pennsylvania. So during those 12 years, um, those items were eating up um, our, our fund balance in the sewer utility as well. Um, and, and that's where we made the mistake. We, we should have been increasing the, the sewer a budget by the amount of increased costs of running the sewer treatment plant every year instead of not doing anything for 12 years and then whopping everybody with a 39% with a tax increase. Um, that was unfortunate. Um, the the five, point, 5 to 8 percent utility, that, I don't know where that number came from. That was not a number. We, what we committed to after that was we would raise the rates based upon the increased cost in operating the sewer utility plant. There was no fixed number. That number, that rate can change every year. So there was no fixed number. No. Um, I'm not interested in what, what the, this is what I remember when I was there. So I'm giving you my explanation. I was there. Um, so there are no projections in effect, but what we should be doing is is raising the rates based upon the increased cost of operating the plant. That's my answer. Okay. okay. Question Council five? President? Yes. Uh, I just want to make an observation about question number two, the latter half of question number two. It says that no such transfers are expected to be made in future budgets. Um, I think everybody on the governing body knows that this governing body can't bind uh, its successors in, 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 in the future. Correct. So it's h hard to say what's going to happen in the future until you're in those future budget years. And in regards to question number five, which is in reference to the use of reserves, I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding there because not all the reserves are being used in the budget at the moment. Uh, initially, we attempted to use the reserves, which were rejected by uh, the DCA. Instead, they uh, provided us, out of leniency, the use of cancellation of appropriation reserves. But not all the reserves are being used in the budget at this point. Thank you, Mr. Council President. There's one. There's uh, no other reserves. No, ma'am. Uh, how about the tax appeal reserve? Oh, with the exception of that, and that is true, the tax appeals that was subject of a special treatment from the division, 
uh, they asked us for a certification from uh, the tax assessor which we obtained and that, that, that that's that's a good assumption forget about that one thank you and the amount of that amount that is eight hundred thousand dollars that we are taking from the tax appeals from every reserve for tax appeals because those funds will not be used by that from here to year end what's our tax appeal reserve now uh, a little over 1.6 million dollars you think that's sufficient i think it is uh had we deemed it fit under the circumstances we wouldn't have used those resources you're not concerned about tax appeals in 2021 not really. In 2022 is a different subject, but at this point, since we have uh, a shortfall in revenues, we have to look at all possibilities. Uh, that's one that we deemed that we could use in 2021. Being that it's the summer in 2021, do you have actuals that you could look at to see if you have support to say we're in good shape? We conducted some analysis and extensive conversations with the tax assessor. Those conversations happen uh, continually throughout the year. So when we come to budget in time, we already have one an idea of how uh, that line item is going is to uh, affect the budget to some extent. It sounds like these are the questions we want to ask at our budget meeting yeah, with the administration. Do that. Yeah. Right, right now we're in public hearing. Yeah. And so part of that is that part of our conversation, uh, Councilwoman Peterson and everyone else, is that in our conversation with the assessor, he had to certify to DCA that the money in the budget is sufficient for his possible appeals this year. We couldn't have taken out without his written approval, if I may. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, I think, the, well, we won't go into it any longer. That's for 2021. 2022 is my concern. But as, it, as the council president said, we can deal with that at the hearing. 22. Right. Anyone else wish to speak from the public? Uh, good evening, Adam McGovern, 87 St. John's Avenue in Tabor. Uh, I would um, first of all like to thank uh, Paul again for being the lone vote uh, for uh, keeping in the budget uh, that 1.1 million uh, that, um, as I understand, uh, had been approved by uh, DCA uh, and Towns of the Auditor uh, that you use um, uh, and uh, for the reasons that you gave for that vote, which was that people are telling you how much we're hurting out here and, uh, you know, that we kind of need every, uh, uh, you know, every economic lifeline, uh, you know, that we can get uh, this pandemic. And uh, I uh, was disappointed when the rest of the uh, council voted it down yeah. because it seems to me from what I see in the papers that it's double what was going to be a very, um, you know, livable tax increase uh, in the budget. Uh, that's being introduced uh, tonight, um, and I'm really sorry that this. Uh, I see it as a down payment. Yes, it would add to our debt, but I see it as a down payment on, you know, true and full economic uh, recovery. Um, what I would like to ask is, first of all, uh, you know, uh, how did you justify that vote in light of the consequences it'll have? Uh, and also, um, <coughs> what do you see as the alternative for tax relief, uh, you know, the budget that we've introduced, you know, <coughs> that we did uh, pass that resolution last time? And also, uh, I'm happy to see that the budget's getting introduced finally tonight. Um, I'm wondering if anyone could speak to what is different uh, this time. Uh, I know the last three budgets, you know, have been passed you know, relatively expeditiously and with not a lot of uh, uh, controversy. Uh, so I'd like to know, A, what's different about this time, and B, um, what does that mean you can expect for an expeditious and impartial consideration uh, in the budget process now? Um, and, uh, <coughs> yes, uh, that's the end of my question, so if you'd like to address any of them. Anybody want to address them? Well, 
Oh, I'm going to make a statement about it. And yeah, you, you can wait for our statements. Chris Connell, 68 Huntington Drive. Um, it's come to my light, and I think the community's light, that we're... Excuse me, Chris, sorry to interrupt. Can you just speak a little bit into the mic, just so we have it for the record? Thank you. Um, anywhere's between what I understand, a million two to five million dollars. Um, you know, that's not chunk change. And where did we get to 2021 that we're short that money? When the last administration, the last councils, when Chris Christie was the governor, had a cap of what was it, 2.8 or 3% increase on, you know, township uh, tax increases. How are we talking now, $5 million, that we're talking maybe up to 15% increases? How did we get there? How did we get to May and June and the public had no knowledge of that shortfall. The other question is, salaried people that are here and in the township, are they gonna take uh, pay cuts to offset what's going on? You have a new chief coming in, okay? And I was in law enforcement, Paul knows it. When a new chief comes in, why do we have to offer them what is the given rate now not what we feel we can afford. And that goes with all administrators, all across this board. The lawyers, town, CFOs, business people. It seems like we always offer more rather than what we can afford. And then we find we don't have the money to pay it. I lived here all my life. And I've never seen the roads, the garbage, That's it's horrible. And I don't mean to, to come across as hostile or upset. I'm upset. All my life I've lived here. And it just seems like all it does, somebody said, kick the can down the road, and eventually, you know what, the can doesn't roll anymore. And that can ain't rolling anymore. You know, Persephone is very much a middle class town. We're, we're tapped out. You know, I just got to had to pay $190 to Lake Community. Now I'm going to have to pay what? Another $1,500 in taxes if it goes through at 14%. You know, a number of years ago, they came around. They wanted to come into our homes to do tax assessments. And it was said across the board, this is not going to be a tax increase. Six months later, my taxes doubled almost. So when is the you know, tongue-in-cheek talk going to end. Really, when is it going to end? Are you done talking? Yeah. Okay. Anyone want to respond to that? You can, can, I, can I just interrupt? It's sad that these are our elected officials and not one of you, <clears throat> not one of you, excuse me, not one of you want to open your mouth and answer one question that I just asked. We all, in fact, one. have prepared statements, which we shared earlier with Mr. McGovern. Excuse me? We all have prepared statements to be read, which we shared with Mr. McGovern right before you. So we do have responses to how we came to the decisions we made. So you just heard everything I said? I and you have no response to anything I just Do you did. think Chris, I haven't been thinking about this since the last meeting? Is that okay. your concern? I wasn't at the last meeting. I'm asking the question now. So what so I was going to say. No answer? What the answer to you, sir, is that a, a lot of what you've asked will be answered when we make our statements regarding this budget. I'll, I'll answer something right now for you. Just to carry it up. Um, a couple things you mentioned is $5 million. I think um, one, COVID definitely had a, an impact on revenue for the town over the last year. And for many years, a lot of money was taken out of the sewer surplus and uh, the water in order to balance the budget from 
the previous administration, and then it's been trickled down. But to remove that, I believe the last year was three and a half million dollars was taken out. If we would have eliminated that three and a half million dollars from taking that right away, we would have had to come up with three and a half million dollars. So that number has been working its way down. But now, because there is no more sewer, there is no surplus right now, that money that has been trickled down it was in the two point something million dollars in the last budget it's not there anymore so now you have that money in addition to what's happened for covid and that's where you're coming up with okay, with a so, lot of that so money the largest municipality in morris county balances its budgets through a sewer plan are you kidding me no. And it took to 2021 for people to realize this? The people who are sitting no. up here realized it. It's the five of us who realized it. Through, you know, we, don't go back to the last administration because then we can go back to Mimi Les. We can go back all the way to Fahey if you wanted to. But nobody, in your four years or two years you're on council, you didn't see that? You didn't look at the books. Nobody looked at the books and said. We did. We did. Well, we did. You know, we realized it in 2018. In 2018. Yes. And you didn't figure out other ways that we could pay our bills. We we, we started tried. cut. We started reducing that amount. I but start, to cut it yeah. flat to cut it cold. We okay, would have so had to come up with. If you cut it cold, we should be at zero. We shouldn't be at a shortfall of a million to five million dollars. But where do you replace that three point five million dollars that was taken out five years ago? I don't know. Like I said, when you bring in people from the outside that are non-union right they're contractual employees don't know what from this or from this right well and i i think some you of know? that some of that has been done but to come up with three and a half million dollars ten percent if you have with salaries 50 people what does that come to the average person here is probably making over 100 grand all right i think the oversimplification is bordering on insulting but thank you for your time no, it's not insulting. It isn't. I'm telling you, it is. Oh, okay. Well, I'm insulted that nobody answered any of my questions. Well, can I just answer, try and answer one of your questions to explain to you that over that period of time, as Councilman Karifi explained to you, the budget was used, uh, the utility surplus was used to balance the budget. And that was done over a 12-year period. And each year, that continued to grow. If you're not going to generate that through normal operating revenue, then you then it's going to build up, giving us a nine million dollar deficit that exists today, that needs to be addressed. Didn't we use the Knoll Country Club as the back door to pay our bills at one time? No, it was the sewer and the water. The Knoll Country Club. I don't Didn't think have a surplus that we pulled money out. Of I don't past? believe they ever did, did they? Yeah, they they, they did. did. Yeah. Okay. Mimi paved the road from Lake Hiawatha to Boonton using the Knoll utility. Um, Go ahead. Um, Mr. Council President, Juan Uribe wanted to respond to that. Okay. Yes, I just wanted to add to the statements made by the Council members that uh, the assessment that the gentleman made about uh, $1,500 or something like that in taxes, that is not true. In the worst case scenario, the tax bill that you get, including all of the rates of the tax bill, it'll be a little over $200, approximately $203, even with the changes that are being made to the budget at this point. So there were a few uh, misstatements made. Sometimes confusion, stuff that we read in the media that doesn't doesn't sink into reality. So excuse me, so that would mean that it's a three percent or four percent? Approximately Correct. four four percent. You were talking about fifteen percent, that is not true. Then what was the fifteen percent that was being spoken about? That's what I'm telling you. You heard it scenario? probably read it scenario. in the media. That is something that could have happened probably because of some portrayals in the media, but that's not the reality. We talk in reality a little over 4%. I believe the 14.6 is what it would have been with every department getting what they asked for, and we cut it down. 
That is correct. If we wouldn't okay. have gotten the $2.3 million that council already approved, if we wouldn't gotten the $5 million of that rejection, uh, which is what we initially consider in the budget, so all of that is out the door. I don't believe it was ever 14%. You can't have a $2.8 million deficit and It'll require a 14% tax increase. That's just with not feasible. The, the, the budget gap of close to $9 million. $9 million. Would be we're not, we're, we weren't talking about the $9 million. If you want to address the $9 million, yes, it would be 14%. Correct. But yeah, that was, was that not, was the worst case scenario. That was the worst case scenario. Was Correct. $9 million. Yeah. That this underlying deficit that we just spoke about. Right. Yeah, so it's the nine million. So when are we going to address the nine million, not the three million? That needs to be addressed. We're doing but it. In reality, then you're just picking the can down. The uh, okay, we can't have. Yeah, we can't have. have we can't have side sideboard discussions. You 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 spoke. Anyone else from the public wish to speak? You can go next, sir. My name is Bill Friedman. Uh, I live at 8 Skyview Terrace. Uh, I've been a Pacific resident for, I believe, 36 years, and I appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk about the budget. Uh, when you're preparing a budget, any budget, you really have to look at where you've just been, where you are currently, and where you're going. What, what's the, the, the probable future. Uh, when we look at where we've just been, obviously, we've been in an unprecedented situation, an unprecedented pandemic here, uh, which resulted in the loss of taxes. But at the same time, when we look at where we are, we know that there are people in this town that are hurting very badly, that have been hurt by the pandemic in the same way, or in a similar way, that the, that the town was hurt. And those people obviously have limited ability to reach into their pocket and pay additional money. Uh, when we look at the future, though, uh, I'm hopeful that there are ways that we can see our way to increase revenue. You know, the hotel taxes were very significantly reduced because no one was staying in Carcifany. That's going to change in the future. We know that there are warehouses in the town that have been vacant. Uh, now there are opportunities to fill those warehouses. Those are going to present, I think, an opportunity for taxes in the future. But we have to look at this as a crisis. We have to protect the taxpayer and look at that taxpayer who can't afford to pay more money. Uh, so I think we have to say this is not business as usual. This is not a year for business as usual. And we have to say, if there are opportunities to shift, we have to be able to shift. Uh, we got to have a, a tax increase that is only reasonable and something that people can actually afford to pay that's not going to create greater prices. I think uh, we have to look at the things we were talking about before. The bridge loan to let the money come in from the American uh, uh, Rescue Plan a year earlier because of the crisis in England. I think also, uh, really, we need to re-look at the, uh, the, the bill, the revisit the bill that came up last time that was rejected uh, to allow unspent money from the past budget to be used immediately in this next budget. Uh, because we have a crisis situation, that's the type of thing we need to do to get us back to where we were before. A 2.15% increase is a reasonable increase. It's a doable increase. And I think that the, the, the council really has to look at that number as the number that is the number that's going to be best for the Parsippany taxpayers who really can't afford more than that. Uh, it's 
too important for this to get run by politics. I, I just ask you as a council to run this by wisdom, to run this by understanding, by compassion, and to show leadership. And I ask you to show that leadership in keeping this budget in control with a reasonable tax increase, as small a smaller tax increase as possible. Okay, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Yes, come forward. Did, did everybody that spoke uh, sign in here on the sign in sheet? It's on. Battery. 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 Yeah. I heard it clicking. It's not going to go. Yeah. Really? Okay. All right, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes they all do. So. Uh, uh, dear respected council uh, members and uh, fellow citizens, first of all, thank you for the opportunity for being able to speak. Sir, could you just state your name and address? Uh, my name is Anil Dadhich, and I live at 154 Seasons Glen Drive, Morris Springs. Yep, so uh, I came to Parsippany in year 2000, so it has been a little over 20 years. Uh, we did go away for a few years in the middle to Colorado. When I was here in the year 2000, on, in that time frame, I used to pay about 59 cents for a bean burrito at Taco Bell. Now I pay about all or 89. So prices have to go up. I think we got that, right? As a common taxpayer of Parsippany, I do understand that. Things have to go up. Things have to be increased. There is a cost of a living adjustment, cost of a lot of different things, you know, inflation, whatever you want to call that. So I get that. Uh, we were in Colorado between 2010 and 2016. When I came back here, my water bill was so low compared to what I was paying in Colorado, I was actually shocked why the per penny per water bill is so low compared to again, Colorado. A few years later, I, 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 last year I think, uh, we had a 40% increase in that, which I understood. I got it, right? Like I said, prices have to go up, for a lot of adjustments, I get that. And then 40% jump, I, I, I kind of have, we have to absorb that, right? Because things have not happened for many, many years. So having said that, I think we as citizens, right? We are here with you to work, right? We are here to take the punch. But you know what? Can we have a little lighter punch? Can we, can we lower the burden a little bit if we, as you go along? I think that's what we, really we are asking for as as citizens of Parsippany. Last year, we all have seen an unprecedented year. It has been an unbelievable year. It's a once in a lifetime, once in a century type of situation, COVID pandemic. The, the, the fellow small business uh, citizens in, in our community, a lot of people who do jobs there, all of them, them are impacted. We are trying to pick pieces, right, and trying to recover from that big impact we all are having. This is not the year for the big punch of 4.8%. I think what we are asking for is, can we lower the strength of that punch? Can we keep around 2% or whatever that smaller number is? That is the request. Like I said, we are here to work shoulder to shoulder. Can we lower the punch? 
I would end my, my uh, comment with a question. Since we have a plan and a proposal and a path forward to keep the increase at a lower rate, why are we doing at a higher rate? Why are we especially doing after this year of pandemic? Why, why are we doing it? Why? Well, it's going to be explained in our statements. But the bottom line to some of us on the council is that if you push everything into next year to keep the taxes lower this year, then you're going to get a whopping big increase next year. And some of us on the council thought that um, uh, instead of letting all the deficits run into 2022, that we should absorb some of that deficit in 2021 so the impact in 2022 is less. Yeah, but like as I requested, right? The, That's my yeah. answer to you. Yep. So could we? Could there be an even mid path between the 4.8 and 2.15? Could there even be a middle path of that, right? As well, right? I think that's what that request is. I don't see any, and it's not 4.8, by the way. Here we come to by the calculations I read. 4.28%. 4.28. From 2.15 to 4.28 by my calculations. Okay. Double. That's all. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. You can come on up, sir. You can go ahead and use the mic in the middle. It's working now. You're welcome. I'm going to take my mask off. Yeah, go ahead. My name is Chandra. I live on 1089 South Beverwick Road. I am very new to Parsippany. I moved here only in December of last year, uh, though I've lived in Livingston for 15 years and 10 years in Mass, and then I came back here in my retirement because I have a grandson who lives in Queens. The I don't have a whole lot to say except I just wanted to share my observation. When I was shopping around for homes, and I was looking at Morris County for this because of its low tax situation because we are retirees. So we obviously want to reduce our burden as time <laughs> goes along. And in the process, I discovered that Parsippany per thousand dollar factor is among the highest in Morris County. So Florham Park is one, one and a half. So if a $700,000 assessed house will cost you $10,000 in taxes in Morris Town. But if it is assessed at 700 here, which it will not be because, you know, the, the, the property prices are a little bit low, but you're going to pay to the factor of 3.1 3, 3 or whatever it is. So, and I, I'm in, not in a position to reflect on the quality of services that the town has because I've been here only for six, seven months. But at this point in time, I would rate it sort of mediocre. It's not, it's not on the top, it's not in the bottom. So I'm just, I'm just puzzled at the fact that for a town, which is the largest town in Morris County, taxes are high as they are. I mean, I understand the extraordinary situation we are placed in now because of COVID and, uh, you know, and whatever else you guys need to do, you need to do. But I think we do need to reflect on the fact that we are one of the highest charging, tax charging townships in this county. And, and that's all I wanted to share. I don't believe that's a correct statement, but... Uh, you, well, maybe second highest or third highest, but take a look and, you know, I've, I've looked at the table for the for the county, town by town, and if you look at the per thousand factor... Well, you have, fact, to look at, you have to look at the services provided, too. Well, well, so you pay, uh, what do you call... Oh, so, all right. You know, okay. you you, call, you pay for trash in, 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 in Florham Park, I mean, you know. Okay. It's so if you have a trade speaker, please uh, just sign in. Just need you to sign in. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay, seeing so no one come forward, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion. Second. Okay, motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Peters. Mr. Karifi? Yes. Ms. Guignani? Ms. Guignani? All right, as well. Yes. Ms. Uh, McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, floor is closed. Okay, now we're up to the resolution. We'll just entertain a motion to introduce a second and then we'll have discussion motion second who seconded that it was a, it was a tie 
Is it Ty? I'll let Loretta have it. No, you can have it. Ah, yeah, we'll give it to Loretta. She's she's back. Welcome back, so. Gift. All right, so um, we got a motion by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Ms. Grignani. Roll call, Mr. Karif. Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Well, actually, no. We said we had a motion and a second, and the council president wanted discussion before we went into roll call. Okay. So go ahead, council president. Do we have a roll call? I yeah. didn't do the roll call yet. You said you wanted to do discussion before roll call. Before each vote? Or? No, we'll just do discussion. You guys want to read your statements, and then we'll do roll call. Okay. <clears throat> Who wants to speak first? You can go first. Yeah, Emily? First. You want me to go first? Yeah. Emily? Does Emily want to go first? Go down I will. I, I have no problems. Enough paper scissors. <laughs> <laughs> the Parsippany Mayor and Administration worked on the township budget for seven months, while most other towns completed their budgets in three or four months. The reasons for the delay in Parsippany were the serious deficits that had to be addressed. These deficits, in my opinion, were caused by Mayor Soriano and his administration in just three and a half years. The mayor initially introduced his budget in April, but it was not statutorily correct, including a $5 million loan plus interest that must be paid off within five years, a fund balance that may not be used overestimating revenue and underestimating expenses. The township auditors had identified a number of serious errors in the budget and could not certify it. By the end of July, the administration finally submitted a budget that could be certified, even though it still overestimated revenue and underestimated expenses. The mayor's budget submitted to the council at its meeting on July 20th, 2021, included a resolution to, quote, authorize cancellation of current fund appropriation reserves, unquote. This resolution would allow the administration to, in my opinion, borrow $1.1 million from the 2022 budget to balance the 2021 budget. The budget still significantly overestimated revenue and underestimated expenses. These mayoral gimmicks, borrowing from 2022 budget, overestimating revenue and underestimating expenses, may get the mayor through the 2021 budget, but he has pushed most of the township's deficit into 2022. He has kicked the can down the road so he can get reelected. He blamed the previous administration for not leaving him enough surplus. The Township Council has rejected the administration's request to borrow $1.1 million from the 2022 budget. We needed to try to find a balance so we pay down some of the deficit in 2021 and not just push it all into 2022. <coughs> By rejecting the administration's request to borrow $1.1 million, the tax rate increase will increase from 2.15% to 4.28%, but next year's increase should not be catastrophic. This 4.28% increase will result in an increase of $102 per home assessed at $300,000. I am a taxpayer myself, and I can tell you that there is no plan for the future for the future in the mayor's budget. We have to look at the mayor's budget and look not just at this year. We have to look at next year and the years after that. And as a taxpayer, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, also, before we vote, I need confirmation on the record that the budget we're voting for includes removing the $1.1 million. Juan? Yes, sir. Uh, the $1.1 million of cancellation of appropriation reserves is eliminated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Who wishes to speak next? You want to go? No. Okay. 
In every year that transfers were made from the utilities, the tax increases in this town were kept artificially low. I would not expect that the average person would know that or be following along very closely, but for those who were paying very close attention, some of you are in this audience, it was clear that this is the path we were on, and it truly is a tragedy that it occurred at the same time as COVID. I said at the last meeting that I was not okay with solving one problem and creating another with exactly the same problem. We stopped the practice of fund transfers from the water and sewer utilities and were applauded for that. The ask of us was then to turn around and reappropriate current unspent reserves and I said no, not after the lessons that have been learned in the previous years of fund transfer impacts. This was not just free money sitting around, this was borrowed time. The strategy of saying no more to borrowing from Peter to pay Paul now begins to turn around and address the short-sighted solutions of the past and we will all contribute, we all live here, we will all contribute to that balancing of the books that we were set on this path 12, 15, 20, 40 years ago. To conflate that with a lack of creativity on the part of the council is wrong and in fact I would argue that an over-reliance on budgeting creativity is what got us here in the first place. Thank you. Okay, Janice. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think, you know, that in my opinion, the town is in a very difficult uh, financial situation. And we'll have to make hard decisions in 2022 and in 2023 and probably beyond to put the town on a viable financial path and begin to address that $9 million deficit that we talked about. Efforts to recover need to start immediately and not put off another year. Uh, that has been the case for too many years, as Council Member Peterson just pointed out. And, and, and as she said, you know, when you, you uh, appreciate that we didn't use the utility budget and to support the $1.1 million is really the same thing. It's a one-time revenue that needs to be generated over and above normal operating revenue. So it is no different than using the utility surplus. So the decision the council members made last week was a small step to begin that process. And generally there seems to be a misunderstanding that a balanced budget is a financially sound budget because that's not always true. Unfortunately, during this critical time, the administration was not transparent in working with the council, as usually was the case. In my opinion, the budget forecasts an optimistic assessment of revenue, and it puts the town in a difficult position on reserves. Excuse me, this mask is a little... Uh, <laughs> The administration prepared the budget, so hopefully during the budget hearings, we will get more open responses. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, I have just been receiving the budget. I was away, and unfortunately, we had to stay in the country because of illness. I too am very concerned about this budget. It is revenues that have been mentioned in this budget that I believe are unrealistic. We have contracts coming up for the police. We are taking monies from different departments, different tr uh, trust funds that I think have to be looked at very carefully. <clears throat> I commend the council I was not here last week when the vote was taken, but I commend them for their courageousness in not accepting the 1.1 million that this administration wanted to have given to this council and this township. We're all concerned about our residents. And I just hope that we will be working on 
2022 budget as soon as possible, making very difficult decisions, which we all know have to be made. Thank you. Well, um, okay, I don't have a prepared statement. I'm just going to try to repeat some of the things that I talked about at our previous meeting. Um, I reached out to a lot of people, as I always do, in town and spoke with them. And I voted to keep the $1.1 million in the budget. Um, the reasons that I did that were, um, there were a couple. One, like I said, in speaking to a lot of the residents in town, every single person that I spoke with, every single one, said to me, please do not raise my taxes above and beyond what is proposed. Nobody wanted a four plus you know, four and a half, 4.8 percent, whatever, whatever that number is, percentage increase above the 2.15. Um, I know that this is going to make things a lot harder in next year's budget. Um, you know, and some of the reasons uh, that I, I wanted to keep that work that in were we asked people in this previous year, we increased your water and sewer 39 percent because our surplus is gone. Um, so we've already asked our residents for an increase. Now, being that increase does bring us to the middle of the pack in the county, but still, it's a 39% increase that people were hit with in one year. Um, COVID, COVID hit a lot of people in this town, and people lost their jobs, um, had to find new jobs, and they're not making anywhere near the amount of money that they're making. So that was another reason why I wanted to keep that money in there so that it would just lessen the hit, especially during this time frame, during COVID. Um, I would urge the administration to immediately, immediately start thinking about next year. Um, some of the things I proposed, hiring freezes, okay? Um, we have to figure out ways to do more with less. There's no doubt about it, because next year by, well, we're not including the 1.1 million, but uh, I hope we had, um, that was just going to make it even harder in next year's budget. But again, the reason that I voted to keep that money in there is because every single resident, just like the gentleman that came up and sat down there, every single person that I spoke to said to me, please do not raise my taxes that much, please. And... I listen to the people, so that's why I voted to keep that money in there. Thank you. Can I just point something out that I think that what we're losing sight of is the fact that this isn't uh, an issue that's going to go away next year. Uh, people are going to have difficulty, but the point is, is that this isn't going to be better next year for the residents with a more significant tax increase. And again, the $1.1 million has to be generated from revenue over and above normal operating revenue. And that is not easy. I don't know how we're going to create that revenue. There's a lot of optimism about how we're going to do it, but there's nothing definitive. So those are their concerns. And the concerns, I'm sure there's a lot of people, there's many people that had difficulty this year. But the future does not look good for those people if we have to continually increase taxes to overcome this deficit. Thank you, Janice. Okay, I guess we're ready for a vote. Okay, we had a uh, motion made by Ms. Peterson, seconded by Ms. Grimiani. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Uh, I'm voting yes just to introduce the budget. Ms. Grimiani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Motion passes. The budget is introduced. Now we're going into closed session. Okay, executive session resolution, whereas the Open Public Meeting Act, Public Law 1975, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances. And whereas the Township Council is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and whereas the Township Council wishes to discuss attorney-client privilege notice to appear, local finance board hearing August 11th, 2021, failure to comply with July 30th, 2021, order to introduce, and whereas minutes will be kept, and once a matter involving the confidentiality of the above no longer requires, 
confidentiality, the minutes can be made public. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council and the Township of Precipity Troy Hills that the public be excluded from this meeting. Motion to adjourn into closed session by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. We're now going to adjourn into closed session. Uh, there is no action that is anticipated to be taken. <laughs> good idea. I like that. Okay, uh, I need a motion. I'll entertain a motion to reconvene. Make a motion. Second. Paul, motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Ms. Peterson. Roll call, Ms. Peterson. Oh, Ms. Peterson. Mr. Karifi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Okay, now can I, motion we're back in open adjourn. session. Make can I get a motion to adjourn? Paul. Paul made Second. a motion. Second. Seconded Second by Ms. McCarthy. Roll call. Mr. Karifi? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Ms. McCarthy? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. We're adjourned. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Cook my dad. Told you. I'll catch you later, man. I thought Just